Hello everyone. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to deploy and configure Microsoft Defender for Endpoint for iOS and iPadOS via Microsoft Intune. Maybe you are asking now why you should even use Microsoft Defender for Endpoint on iOS or iPadOS because applications are installed from the App Store only. Uh, the App Store applications are monitored, protected, it should be healthy with no uh, risks or immediate risks. But the reason is that it's not only about some malicious code or malicious software, or malicious applications. It's actually also about malicious links, for instance. Because users may receive a malicious link via SMS or iMessage or some instant messaging application or via email. The link can uh, open a website that can be a phishing website. It can be a malicious website in terms of like that it will collect some sensitive user information uh, such as credit card numbers and so on. And it's a good idea to protect your users also from these type of threats. So that's the reason why you should onboard all of your iOS and iPadOS devices to Microsoft Defender for Endpoint. The good thing about Microsoft Defender for Endpoint and Microsoft Intune integration for iOS is that you can deploy Microsoft Defender for Endpoint on iOS and iOS via uh, iPadOS via zero touch deployment. So there will be no configuration required from end users. You fully configure it via Microsoft Intune, you deploy the application and users don't need to do anything else. It will just appear on their devices and will be functional, which is very good. And it's not unfortunately possible on Android devices because for Android devices, there is always some interaction required. All right, let's get to it. There are three configuration parts when you are deploying this zero touch or when you are configuring this zero touch deployment of Microsoft Defender for Endpoint for iOS devices. First part is VPN because Microsoft Defender for Endpoint, specifically the network protection component uses VPN, but it's not a standard VPN tunnel somewhere to the internet, to the cloud but it's a loopback VPN. So there is no outbound tunnel uh, open for the VPN. It's just connected to the loopback address. The reason for that is that that's the way how network protection works. So in order for Microsoft Defender for Endpoint to protect your users, this VPN needs to be active. Otherwise the network protection component will not function. Second part of the configuration is deployment of the application because Microsoft Defender for Endpoint on iOS and uh, iPad OS is an application like any other. So it's available from the App Store. It needs to be installed on the device. So that's second part. The last part is the actual configuration of the application. So how the application should behave, how it should be configured. And it's also very important to have it pre-configured. So it's zero touch for end users. So first thing we are going to do is to configure the VPN. So we go to devices, iOS and iPadOS, configuration, and we create a new configuration policy here. The platform is pre-selected, it's iOS and iPadOS and profile type will be templates because VPN is available from the existing templates here. So we select VPN and click create. Uh, we name it however we want. So let's call it MDE VPN. Connection type will be custom VPN because we are not going to use any of these pre-configured uh, VPN profiles. We are going to create our own custom profile. Connection name can be again anything. So I will name it just Defender for Endpoint. The VPN server address, like I've already mentioned, will be 
the loopback address. So it's 127.0.0.1. Authentication method will be username and password. Split tunneling will be disabled. And VPN identifier is one specific identifier that I paste here. This com.microsoft.scmx. All right. Then we need to configure two VPN attributes. First VPN attribute says that we want to enable silent on board. So we want the VPN to be silently onboarded, not asking the user anything. Second attribute is single sign on and we want that also configured and enabled. Then we can move on to the automatic VPN part and switch to on-demand VPN and we want to add one rule. The rule will be that we want to connect to VPN and restrict to all domains. So we want the VPN to be active for all domains. And we want to block users from disabling automatic VPN so that users cannot disable the VPN. It will be active permanently. That's for this configuration. You can click next and apply it to either all devices, all users, select or selected devices. This is my demo environment, so I will go with all devices. Obviously, in your production environment, you should start with some small scope and then uh, expand the scope eventually. And the last page is just summary. So we see the current configuration. And we can cre create. The VPN profile will appear here in a second. Next part is to deploy the application. Be before we can actually configure the application, it needs to be deployed. That's the reason why we first need to deploy the application and then as the last step, we will do the configuration of the application. So we go to apps, iOS and iPadOS, click the add button. The app is available from the App Store, so we can choose the first option here and select app. You can just type Defender. Now it searches the App Store. Scroll a little down and here we see Microsoft Defender Security. This is the application we want to deploy. You don't need to change anything here. You can keep it default. You can just click Next. On the Assignments page, you need to select um, to what devices you want this application to be assigned to. Definitely, you shouldn't start with all devices as required, because again, it's a production environment, I assume. So start with some small scope and then potentially expand it to all devices. But since this is my demo environment, I can go ahead and click all devices as required which means it will be automatically installed on those devices. And we click create here. All right, the application is prepared, which means we can go back to apps and we can configure the application. So we go to app configuration policies and we create a new policy here that will target managed devices. We name the policy somehow, so it will be MD settings, for example. Again, it can be anything. Platform obviously is iPad OS and iOS. And the targeted application will be our Microsoft Defender Security. Click Next. The configuration setting format can be either XML or Configuration Designer. You can download uh, some pre-configured XML or you can prepare an offline configuration and upload it here, but we will use Configuration Designer now. For the Configuration Designer, there are multiple options that you can configure. You can find details about each option and all of the options that are actually available on the official Microsoft documentation. 
I will show you the most common settings that I usually recommend. So first setting is Defender Network Protection Enable. Um, that's the standard network protection module that we want to have enabled. Uh, value type is string and the value is true. So we want to have it enabled. Next setting is open network detection. So detection of open Wi-Fi networks and security checks for the open Wi-Fi networks. The value type is integer and the configuration value is two, which enables it. Next setting is defender and user trust flow enabled. That allows end users to manipulate with the trust flow. We don't want that, so we change it to false. Next setting is network protection auto remediation. Value is string, uh, value type is string and value is true. Auto remediation is uh, also related to the open network detection. So it's uh, related to the network protection component of Microsoft Defender for endpoint. Network protection privacy type is again string and value here will be false. You can obviously change it to whatever you want, but this is related to privacy. Uh, so if you want to see reports in the security portal or not, if you set it to false, it means that the security reports for network connection will be visible to your administrators. If you change it to true, it means that it will respect end user privacy and the reports will not be available in the portal. Next part is web protection. It will be string and true. So simply the web protection component that protects your users uh, when they are browsing the web via a web browser. Next part, Defender exclude the URL in report. It's again related to privacy, if you want to see URLs in the security portal or not. Here the value type is boolean and I set it to false, which means I will see URLs in the portal. You can of course disable it and respect end user privacy. Optional VPN is again boolean and false. The reason for it is that we have already configured the VPN, so we don't need any other optional VPN configured for Defender for Endpoint. Threat and Vulnerability Management Privacy Mode. Threat and Vulnerability Management allows you to see uh, also installed applications and their uh, Threat and Vulnerability Management results. If you want to see it, you need to set it to false. If you don't want to see it or want to respect end user's privacy and don't see what applications they have installed on their phones or tablets, you can change it to true. Next setting is disable sign out, which we want to block. The type is string and the value is true. If you enable sign out, it means that users can sign out from the application, which then means that the application will be, or Defender for Endpoint, will be disconnected from your uh, security portal. And last setting is about feedback. It's a type of boolean and it's false, which means we don't want to allow end users to send feedback from the Defender for Endpoint application. This is the kind of baseline that I usually configure or recommend con to configure. Uh, you can add more settings or remove some settings if you don't want to, to configure it. Um, but we can go next. On the assignments, again, you choose um, the devices that you or users that you want this policy you know, assigned to. It's my demo environment, so I can assign it to all devices. Last page is just a quick summary of the configuration, so we can click create. And that's it. We have Microsoft Defender for Endpoint deployed and fully configured in the zero touch configuration mode, which means that end users will not be asked anything and users will not have to do anything. It will just start working 
when they get these policies and uh, the application itself. That's all from my side for today. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked it. Please share the video uh, on your social media platforms. And I look forward to uh, showing you some other nice cybersecurity uh, settings and configurations in one of my upcoming videos.